Hi, I'm Scott Humphrey, CEO of the World Floor Covering Association, and today on Leadership Live, I want to talk to you about trust. There's probably no leadership trait that is in greater demand today than trust. In fact, in an environment created by this pandemic where there is so much fear, there's probably never been as great a need for trust as there is today. Dr. Albert Moravian at UCLA did some research to determine what is it that causes someone to trust us. Here's what he found out. 7% of your trust comes from the words that you say, simply the words. 38% of your trust comes from the way that you say those words, or what he would call the music, the tone of voice that accompanies that. Let me give you an example. I'll use the same words three times, but give you three different meanings. Let's use the words, you're okay. I'm going to change the tone of voice and see if it changes the meaning of the words. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. So you can see the words alone, the printed page alone, cannot establish the trust. When you put different music with it, you change the meaning. But here's the overwhelming part. Overwhelmingly, 55% of trust was established by the action that accompanied the words and the music, or what he would call the dance. And he would tell you that to establish the greatest trust, the words, the music, and the dance need to be in alignment. You need to exemplify, you need to live out what you say. So in other words, to say, I love you, or I care about you, or I'm concerned about you, are really only words. You can say that with some inflection in your voice and add greater trust, but to really, to really create trust, you've got to also put action behind it. That matters in your home, it matters in your business. It matters in your community. We're looking for examples of trust. And I found a great one I've shared many times. His name is Dr. Evan O'Neill Kane. And on February 15th of 1921, he exemplified trust. Kane was a kind of a pioneer when it came to surgical techniques. And he believed that you could use a local anesthetic versus a general anesthetic for many surgeries. In fact, he believed that the general anesthetic often took more time to get over than the surgery itself. And if you've been through a major operation, you might agree with that. So he searched high and low to see if he could find someone that would allow him to do an appendectomy on them using a local anesthetic so that they are still awake during the operation. Finally, after getting many doctors to say, hey, we agree with you, but we're not going to come out publicly and agree with you until you had someone undergo the operation. On February 15th of 1921, he finally found someone to undergo the operation and successfully performed an appendectomy using a local anesthetic. As you can imagine, the recovery time was dramatically less. Amazing story. Even more amazing because on February 15th of 1921, Dr. Evan O'Neill Kane operated on Dr. Evan O'Neill Kane. Long before we had the technology of today, he performed an operation on himself so that he could prove what he believed. He was asked about it many years later when he was recounting some of the things he had accomplished in his career, and he made this quote, On that day, the doctor became a patient so the patients could trust the doctor. If there has ever been a time in our history where people need to be able to trust their leaders, it is today. And it is not enough to say, trust me. It's not enough to emphatically say, trust me. If you want others to trust you, you must live it out. You must put action behind the words and behind the music. The words, the music, and the dance must be in alignment. Trust is needed. You have the ability to give it. So I challenge you. Live in trust, live the example, and go out there and lead.